Hello and welcome to today's webinar, Next Generation of Pressure Independent Valves, Enhanced HVAC Systems Performance and Energy Efficient, presented by Russell Faircloth. We appreciate you joining us today. My name is Audra Robinson and I'll be your moderator. As a friendly reminder, these webinars are recorded and will be posted to Belimo's YouTube page. At the end of the presentation, we will have a question and answer session. I invite you to ask your questions through the question box at any time and I will read them out loud during our question and answer session. Russell will answer as many questions as we have time for, but rest assured if we do not have time for your question via email. If you are experiencing any technical issues, please open the chat box in the bottom right corner and let me know so I can assist you. Without further ado, I would like to introduce to you Russell. Thanks, Audra. Yeah, hi everybody. My name is Russell Faircloth. Uh, I am the product specialist for pressure independent valves here at Belimo and Danbury. Um, today we'll be going over our electronic pressure independent uh, generation four valves and by the end of it hopefully you have a better understanding of what uh, the new generation has to offer and how it can help you in, in your system in your day to day. So let's get started. So today we're going to be going over a bunch of different things um, but first we're going to start off with the EPIV4 product range. Um, so we have a better understanding of what was changed and what was replaced and things of that nature. Uh, at the, we'll give you, I'll give you a, a new de product design. I'll go over an overview of what that changed and what that kind of looks like for our new generational parts. The feature and benefits of the new design and how it will affect your system and why uh, we made the changes. And then, like Audra said, we'll finish it up with a Q&A with time permitting. All right, so the product range and overview, here we go. Um, if you're not familiar with EPIV4s or the EPIVs in general, it's depicted of five major components, one being the actuator. So the actuator has changed from the previous version. Um, previously, the EPIV3s, which one uh, previously to this, the brain of the operation, the head honcho, that was in the actuator. Uh, that no longer is the case. It's more of a, a I don't want to say necessarily a dummy down, but it's a more basic actuator. It still has energy. Um, it saves energy and cost and it's very precise in where it turns. Um, it just doesn't have all the brains and all the calculations aren't done there anymore. Um, so we made that switch and we moved it over to our center module. So this is the brain. This is this is the head honcho. They control everything. So this is where your calculations are going to be held, your flow, your compensation, whatever you whatever is being done, this is where you're going to find it, and that's how it's going to be affected. So when that when it goes through those calculations, it's done within that flow body. Um, and I'll be going over the flow body and how um, it's different from the EPIV3 in a later slide and how it's kind of coming up with some of these calculations um, so you have a better understanding of what's going on within that section. Um, next is our temperature sensor. So we did have a temperature sensor in the EPIV3, so it's similar in that regard. And that was for mainly glycol compensation previously, but we did not have a feedback or output signal previously with the new EPIV. Fours. We do have that capability. We, uh, it does read temperature in that section, and you can see that in our uh, Bloom Assistant app as well. Uh, I just want to make note that this is different from the energy valves. The energy valves actually comes with two set temperature sensors, while this does not. So uh, there's some confusion there sometimes, so I just want to put that out there. And then we, last but not least, our characterized control valve. And actually, this is the only component that actually say exactly the same as previous. You know, if it's not, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And uh, that's actually what we did with this portion of the. Uh, of the valve here, so. All right, so the main models of, uh, we're gonna be talking today about in the in terms of EPIV4s is our non-failsafe uh, configurated EPIVs, our failsafe EPIVs, and then um, within the failsafe, non-failsafe family, we have our NEMA4 uh, option as well. So I'll be discussing those throughout this PowerPoint. So. Okay, so this is the bread and butter. This is something that if you haven't, if you're not familiar with our previous generation, or if you are, this will be a very informative slide for you. Um, so on this on this chart on the right here, you're going to see the 14 replacement models. So this is the new models on the far right, um, and you won't see it on this slide necessarily in this chart, but we also have 14 new models for all the NEMA 4, so that includes the failsafe, non-failsafe that I was talking about, um, and this is only affects the half inch to two inch range. This does not affect the larger sizes like the flange units we have also available. This is only for the half inch to two inch. And this is replacing all of our half inch to two inch stuff. So if you need a previous version, it it's going to be replaced with these new models. 
So to bring up an example, so I want to discuss with you, so bring your attention to the bottom there, highlighted in red. Um, so if we start with the very first one, that P2200 SU, that was our previous generation uh, lower flow uh, two inch valve added with the AKRX24, which is our fail safe actuator at the time, and dash EP2. This has been replaced by our EP200 with our fail safe actuator dash E for electric. And I'll go more into the nomenclature later as well, um, but I just wanted to make note of this. And you'll see below here, the same thing, what I just talked about, but with a non fail safe actuator attached to it, has been replaced by the EP200 ARX dash E. And then if you're not familiar, and maybe you are, that mod, section that mod section is super important it's something that we have made a change to um this means previously you'd have to get if you want a backnet or mod bus you would have to get the mod version to do that that no longer is the case um because mod bus and backnet will be incorporated in all versions half inch to two inch so no longer are we are having a specific one just for backnet and mod bus that is on all of these so you're no longer paying extra just to have that communication system okay and then right below it, you it's the same valve and same kind of configuration we were just talking about, but the one change is um, here is that we no longer are depicting our high flow and low flow with the numbers. We're depicting it with just this H. So if you want the higher flow, it's going to have an H in there. And if you want the lower flow one, it's going to be no H. So that's the main differences here, and that's why I use this example. All right, so to bring it all together, so we just make sure we're on the same track. So in summary, um, we have our EPIV non failsafe with the NEMA 4, and then we have our EPIV failsafe with NEMA 4, um, and again, half inch to two inch. So just, just driving that home, you know what I'm saying? So, and this all comes standard with NFC, glycol compensation, it has, and it has Modbus and BACnet on all of these different options. So this slide, you, you can actually see this right in our PGPL if you go to the EPIV section, um, but you'll see all your different specifications that you may need to know, whether that's the materials, end fittings, electrical connection, uh, connections, this is obviously modulating. Um, most of this stayed the same from our EPIV threes, not, not too much change here on, on that stuff. Um, the main change will be in the differential pressure range, and that's only specific to, it's specific to the valve, that's why you don't see a number or anything here. So if you went to a specific valve, you'll see that there. Um, and also I want to make note that at the very, very bottom here, you'll see the flow uh, measurement tolerance, which is plus or minus 2% for these valves, which is a really low number. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in, uh, in a later slide. But I just want to make, make note of where it is. And this, again, this is in your PGPL for you to refer back to if you need it. Um, but this is a direct screenshot from it. Okay, so this is an area that we, we with the changes to our products, you'll notice that there's different flow ratings. So first you'll see the EPIV3 on your left, and you'll see the EPIV4 on your right. And what I want to make note of and talk about right now um, is the different flow ratings that we have we have now with this change of the design. So you'll notice the half inch valve actually gained some flow from 5.5 to 6.6. .6. Our three quarters went to from 10.3 to 11. Our one and one and a quarter remained the same. And the one and a half uh, went from 39.9 .9 to 44. And uh, you'll, you will notice, and don't be concerned, it, but because we still cover the same range that we did previously, but you'll see that 76.1, 266 on our lower flow two inch valve. And reason being is after testing, we realized the, the valve was more accurate and it's much more comfortable for this size valve at that range. Um, and that's why we still have the higher flow. So you still cover the same spectrum. So if you needed that 76.1, you'd just be on the EP200H rather than the lower flow. So you, you still got you covered, it's still, does everything, it's just a different configuration is needed to really maintain the accuracies that we want here at Blimo. So um, that, was the, that was the reason for that change. But across the entire line, we gained lots of flow on our smaller sizes. So that's overall a, a, benefic a benefit to this new design. Okay, so moving on to the nomenclature that I said I would talk about. So again, you'll see this right in the PGPL. Um, and I'm only going to really be talking about the uh, smaller sizes. So you'll represent it with that EP in the front there. 
uh, you, you'll notice it's half an inch to two inch, and you'll see a P6 if you're if we were talking about a flange unit. Um, so we changed it from that P2 to EP, and now we have the valve size, which it remained the same. That didn't change, and we no longer are going to have the flow rate on our smaller size valves. Um, that actually there is a chart in the PGPL if you need to look at it, um, similar to what I had on the previous slide, but a, a little more um, specific. Um, you won't see that on the nomenclature. Reason being is we're trying to we were trying to make the part number a little more simplistic and easier to read and not so complicated for uh, any user to look at it. Um, you wouldn't see the ANSI rating obviously because these are not flange units on these smaller sizes. And then you'll see the uh, actuator type. So that can be any of our non-fail safe LRX, NRX, ARX, GRX, dash E for electric, or the electronic fail safe, which is the AKRX or the GKRX. That's what you'll see now. Uh, for a lower size, you won't see the power supply anymore, like that 24-EPT. You won't see those two things anymore. Uh, that's standard. We'll have that 24-volt uh, on there, but it won't be on the part number anymore. And the EP2 is taken off as well. And uh, like I spoke before, the mod, the dash mod, you won't see on our smaller sizes as it's come standard across the entire line, which was a huge benefit to this new line release. And last but not least, if you were to choose a NEMA 4 option, you'll see an N4 at the very, very end. So it would be EP050 plus AKRX-EN4. So that's what you would see on the part number if you were to so order it as such. Okay. So within our PGPL again, you'll see these 14 part numbers, um, the seven fail-safe and non-fail-safe options. And I told you I would talk about this earlier. Um, so the main change we had with our uh, differential pressure is right here. Um, the differential pressure range for the EP200H, so that's our high flow valve. It, went, it uh, previously was at five PSI, it is now 8.3. The 8.3 was a change that we had to reluctantly make because that is where we needed to be to get our true accuracies. Um, and it just overall it needs that extra pressure but for the most part in most systems these valves are seeing a lot more pressure than 8.3 and it has not been an issue uh at least not with my time here at blimo has not been an issue at all and uh, most systems have well more than psi so uh, it has been an issue but that is a change that we did have to make for these higher flow valves um below Below this, you'll see the actuator numbers, and this is pretty similar to our last PGPL, but you'll see the actuators, and if you're sizing your valve and you need to figure out what actuator goes with what valve, um, the example I'll be using in this slide is our EP050 model, so our half-inch valve. Uh, where you see these uh, dollar amounts right here is the actuators you can use. So right above, you see the LRX-E, and if you follow way down, they do correspond with one another, these two charts. That 1429 there, that is showing you that this is um, this valve does go with, I mean, I'm sorry, this actuator goes with this valve and it can be used. And you'll see blanks to the right of it because the NRX and the ARX are not used on this size. But then we have the AKRX-E for our fail-safe uh, applications. So these are the two valves you'd have to choose from with that size. And subsequently, all the rest of the valves work in the same regard. Um, so I just wanted to point that out to you if you need some help uh, figuring out what size valve is best for uh, I'm sorry, what size actually works best with your valve? All right. So same kind of concept with our NEMA 4 stuff. Um, it, you know, it has same information. However, there's only the two actuators that you can use. And you'll see that N4 at the end representing that NEMA 4 that I talked about earlier. Um, so you'll see that. But the reason I brought you to this slide is because now with these NEMA 4, with the NEMA 4 release, we have our um, heater options at the very bottom there, highlighted there for you. Uh, forgive me if it's small, hopefully you can see that. But those are the two thermostat, well, the two heater options, the thermostat temperature control option or the humidistat humidity control option. Um, and you can see two examples of how it would be notated in the nomenclature for that part number. So you would see the, you know, uh, the EP050 plus the actuator ARX-E for your non-fail-safe actuator plus the NEMA4 N4 or HT or HH, depending on which one you had uh, you use in, in that field. So, uh, and the difference between the two is depending on what temperature 
uh, these kind of valves would be in. So if it's much hotter, you'll probably go with the humidity control. And if it's a little cooler, you'll probably go with the thermostat control. So um, those are two things that we change, obviously with the new release of the NEMA 4. And that's right in the PGPL if you need to reference that again. Okay, so um, the next couple of slides are just some insulation things I want to point out because uh, there's, I, I, there seems to be sometimes a disconnect and I want to make sure I talk about it. Um, and we put on just about all of our documents and I, I could show you on those previous documents, it was there too, of the five time diameter length we need to, uh, that we recommend for these valves. It really helps the valves a lot to have that length before the valve, uh, before the valve hits. So it's highly recommended when you install to have that. Um, so I want to make note of it on this slide. And this next slide is showing the, um, showing the, the split installation unit is depicted here. So how it would kind of look on, on your system if you were to do a split installation. And then this slide is the do's and don'ts of how to install your EPIV. So again, that five time diameter length is right there. It's, a, it's on just about everything we have in our documents. It's super important. Um, we recommend you not to install on the highest point uh, where there'll be a lot of air, which will cause issues with measurement. We would not like you to install it upside down, which is noted there. And we would not like you to install it after another unit, uh, another device. Um, this all can affect, excuse me, how it how it functions. So we highly recommend you listen to these instructions for the best optimization of your of your product. All right, now we get to the fun stuff, uh, the features and benefits of the PIV fours uh, that I like talking about the most. So let's move on to that. Okay, so with this new EPIV, you have the near field communication that I talked about earlier. And with that NFC application, you can easily configure most things within your Belimo Assistant app with these with these products. So the way that would kind of work is you would uh, power up your cell phone because everyone has a cell phone on them nowadays, especially those smartphones. And you put on your Bluetooth, you put the Bluetooth, you open up your Belimo app, and you put your phone up to the NFC logo that's right on that flow meter I talked about earlier, the, the flow module there, central module, um, and then it should connect. And when you do connect, you'll be brought to a screen like this on the far left, that overview screen. Uh, forgive me if you can't really see it, it's a little small, but I wanted you to be able to see some of the screens you might see when you get in there. Um, and it'll give you like a basic overview of what's going on with your with your valve, right? And um, so when it's, if you say you have it all set up, you'll be able to, hit these little orange buttons there. Those are actually bring up different graphs for you know the, the, the set point DDC, the valve position. You can see a, an actual graph of what's happening. It's a snapshot of what's happening at that time. So it's really, really cool. I highly recommend you going to and playing around with it and see what it can do. Um, to the right of that same little screenshot is the advanced operations there. You can generate an NIST calibration certificate whenever you want. You know, whenever you may need it, it's on demand. You can generate that. And I'll show you an example of that in a little later, but that is an option within this system. Uh, you can produce commissioning reports and you can confirm the settings, the operations, make sure it's all set up exactly how you want it when you receive it. Um, and you can make those adjustments if need be. Uh, if you look at the bottom section here, you'll notice some things you can change. Uh, again, I'm not giving you the full capabilities of this thing. I'm only giving you snapshots of what it can do, the basic idea of what it can do. So uh, this isn't everything, but it can display flow. It can display your energy, your operational parameters. You can change your Vmax, your Vmin. You can even change the media that's in your system. So uh, God forbid it was, it was set up for uh, just water when you have glycol in your system there. Uh, you can change that right then and there. So it's a really good system and it makes it highly, highly um, marketable and it, it makes it really easy to make your changes if needed. And of course, the glycol concentration percentage is on there as well. This all can be done through the Blimo system app. So I highly recommend using NFC. All right, as I mentioned before, BACnet and Modmus are both available for uh, the EPIV4s across the line. It still has its analog feedback option. Don't don't get me wrong, uh, it has that 0 to 10 volt option, the 0 0.5, the 2 to 10. Um, it even has the user defined range. And again, in that Blimo system app, if you for say needed uh, a 2 to 9 volt system, that you can do that and you can make that change whenever you need it. Uh, again, that's in your Blimo system app. Easily, easily done. And make sure when you make your changes, I should say, any change, uh, you'll see a screen 
uh, at the very top, it'll say right. You just click right, it'll download it to your, your valve, and then you should be good to go after that. Um, with the EPIV 4s it actually has the ability to, to uh, a sensor input, which is something we did not have in the past. So these sensor inputs are, are a possibility with EPI 4s which uh, gives it even more capabilities. Um, I kind of went over this a little briefly, like the installation instruction sheet of how the split installation is installed, but uh, I just wanted to reiterate the split installation is available for the EPI V4s. The meter valve is uh, separated for installation for spaces a little restricted. Um, we currently are limited to our cable. It's a three foot cable. Um, so I just want to make note of that. This expands the application potential for those who have those tougher uh, install locations. And for the future, as this progresses um, in time, longer cables will be available for these applications specifically um, for the next phases to simplify the installation process if you were to go the split installation route. So don't you worry, we'll have that for you eventually. All right, so this goes into the tech part of um, what how the calculations are kind of made. And I'll give you a brief understanding of what this is. So what you'll see here in this slide, you'll see there are two emitters slash receivers, A and B. Um, you'll have your temperature sensor, of course, in the middle, and then you have your acoustic mirrors at the bottom there. Um, and the way it kind of works is one signal goes in one direction of the media, and then there's another signal that goes the opposite direction of the media, bouncing off those acoustic mirrors. So the difference in transit time is directly proportional to the velocity of that fluid. So using what we know of the cross-section of the valve of, of that pipe there, we can determine the flow the flow rate or the volume that's going on within the valve. So that's how some of these calculations are kind of made. I just want to give you a brief understanding of what's happening within your product with that flow meter as the brain. Um, and it gets very, very accurate results this way. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, there was a flow measurement tolerance that I was talking about, that plus or minus 2%. Obviously, you can see in this screen that does not represent that 2% uh, that I'm talking about. And the reason being is in this system, the EPIV is set up for a DN15 specific one, is set up for no compensation of glycol. And in this system, there is glycol. There's 50% glycol in this system, but it's not reading as such. It just thinks there's water in here. And these red long, these raw, these long lines, these red lines here. This is the range that we are uh, we are trying to stay within. That is what the goal is here. And obviously, you can tell we don't not with with this current setup. That's why it's so important for you to set up your EPIVs correctly, depending on what your system has in it. So I wanted to show you this because on the next slide, when you do fix that and you do represent glycol, that 50% glycol in this kind of thing, it changes drastically. We fall well within these red lines. And we're definitely in that that two percent plus or minus two percent for the different temperatures. I didn't say, but these are all different temperatures. These lines, um, and we fall well within it, and we're, we're right in the middle. So it does have an effect on these valves. And to get true accuracy, you need to make sure you represent what you have in your system. So uh, I just wanted to make sure you understood that. All right, so in your Blimo Assistant app, you can generate these NIT, NIST traceable uh, certificates. Um, they're on-demand PDFs. So you go to your Assistant app, you download as a PDF, and you can generate via the app, of course, or you can do it through the cloud. Um, and it can be emailed and saved, so right through the app. I've, I've done this myself. I've generated this report, and I've sent it to myself via uh, my Gmail account for my personal use. Um, it's really great if you need to send it to somebody or just know what's kind of going on in your system to give you an overall idea of what's going on. So it's, it's really, really beneficial and uh, uh, really, really user-friendly. All righty. So on uh, this slide here, I just wanted to show you. So all this stuff that I've talked about in the screenshots and in the installation instruction, the documentation, all of this can be found under any specific valve on our Blima website. Uh, for example, if you have uh, on the far left, you'll see it's an EP200H document. Um, these are pulled right from the website. And so if you need installation, you need more descriptions on Modbus or BACnet, that's all there for you at, at your use. Um, so uh, if you need anything, please refer back to that. And, and of course, if you can't find or you need some help navigating, I'm absolutely happy to help in any way I can. So uh, use me as a resource if you need to. 
All right. So um, that's it for me, really. I kind of that's I went through that. I feel like kind of fast. I don't know if I actually did go through that fast, but I want to say thank you for joining me today for this EPIV overview. Um, I hope you found it informative and valuable. And if you have any further questions or you would like to discuss any of the topics I covered in more detail, I'm happy to. So please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I believe Audra will probably give out my email if you need to give me uh, some information. So I'm happy to talk and discuss any questions you may have. Uh, let's pass it back uh, to Audra. Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much, Russ. Uh, before we move. Questions, remember to follow Blimo on social media to keep informed about what's happening. We will in the question box and allowed. If you should think of any questions after the session, you can always email training at us.belimo.com. Okay, we do have a few questions for us. Uh, so the first one is, what are some of the challenges that the EPIV4 can address in the HVAC systems and how does it improve occupant comfort and air quality? Oh, okay. Oh, wow, what a question. Um, so the so I, I kind of went over this briefly, but the eBayview can improve your performance in HVAC systems um, by ensuring that constant flow and accurate flow control. So, you know, as your unit changes, it's going to change with you. So uh, this leads to more efficient and effective operation. It can help regulate your indoor temperatures. And that's what, and this is what helps prevent those hot and cold spots you might feel within a building. Um, the EPA, it also has, you know, the energy savings capabilities, which I kind of mentioned with that actuator. Uh, with reducing that excessive heating or air con control or air conditioning control, so that you have those more consistent indoor temperatures, um, and your occupants obviously feel feel better too. And if you need to change anything with your specific your your flows, remember you can connect to the N the the app, the NFC app, or I'm sorry, the the Blimo Assistant app through the NFC, um, and that can help you regulate too. So th that that's what I would say. That's how it helps that system. Great, thank you so much. Uh, I have another question here. Can the EPIV4 be customized to meet the specific flow control requirements? Yeah, so um, I so the 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 Blimo system app has a ton of different things you can do, but um, yeah, it can be customized to meet specific flow control requirements um, with through NFC. So it's really easy to use. You can do commissioning, configuring the, the EPIV4 valve. Um, you can adjust that flow rate, the operating mode, um, even the valve action to meet your specific needs in your system. Um, and again, you just all you have to do is put it up to your phone with make sure your Bluetooth is on because if it's not, it won't work. To uh, while you have the Bleem system up, you hold your phone up to the logo, it'll connect, and you can make any changes, uh, most changes that you need within the app. Great, thank you so much. Um, and are there any ongoing maintenance or collaboration requirements for the EPIV4, and how can users ensure optimal performance over time? Man, you guys are making me work for my money today, huh? All right. Um, so the EPIV4s were designed uh, to provide optimal performance without the need of any maintenance or recalibration. So. Um, you know, it's meant to be maintenance free, meaning users don't have to perform any scheduled maintenance or just ensure to ensure your operation is, is proper. So um, and this allows you to have consistent and reliable performance without the hassle. Uh, and, and, and that's why these are these are so good. But, you know, if you had to make those changes or you had to uh, improve your optimal performance and changes can be made, you can use the Blimo Assistant app as your diagnostic tool because you, you can help monitor and the valve performance so you can check with those reports that you can you can generate um, and you can see them before the issues actually become a problem usually there'll be something notif notifying you or signifying that there's an issue going on with your valve and uh, that's that's why this NFC app is so or I'm sorry I always say NFC app the Blimo Assistant app is so important for your use with these so um, that's how you're going to get the longevity out of these by just looking through that Great. I think we have time for one more question. Um, have the dimensions of the valve changed? Yeah. So the the valve uh, the valves have changed in size. They're a little bit bigger than previously. Um, those that should be right in our documentation for you. 
uh, but they're they are a little bit a little bit larger um, compared to the EBIB threes, and um, I, so they're not quite that one to one replacement as as some might think so. So they are slightly bigger, so you have to spec them in a little bit. But um, and that should be on our website uh, under the technical documentation. But if you need any help finding that, please please reach out to me, and I'll, I'll definitely set you up in the right direction for sure. Great, thank you. I think that is all that we have time for for today. Once again, I want to thank you so much for attending today's webinar. I'd also like to thank our presenter, Russell Fairroth. If you should have any further questions, please email training at us.bulimo.com and have a great day.